Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna have a look at the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. I'm gonna redesign it because I think it could be a lot more retro designed than what we have in the uh, in the current production version. So the original Jeep Wagoneer was first introduced as a 1963 model and was the first four-wheel drive vehicle made into an automatic transmission, pioneering the first SUV. So if you want to go back to the genesis of SUVs the Jeep Wagoneer would be it. It was also the first vehicle to combine off-road capabilities and four-wheel drive with state-of-the-art ride quality and premium interior. Now, in addition to the regular Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer from last year, we now have the longer wheelbase 2023 Jeep Wagoneer L and the Grand Wagoneer L models. And these L models versions, they extended the wheelbase by 7 inches and 12 inches in total and this obviously is great for interior space but if I'm honest, looking at these long version models of the Grand uh, Wagoneer and the Wagoneer it makes for some fun, funky proportions here, I don't know, what do you think about the long wheelbase Wagoneers? Uh, do you think something looks a little off in there? It looks almost like a lifted van or something like that. A kind of a unique look, I guess. The regular wheelbase Wagoneers are powered by either a 392 horsepower 5.7 liter V8 or a 471 horsepower 6.4 liter V8 with, while the long wheelbase L models comes with a 510 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque V8. No info on pricing for the long wheelbase Wagoneers yet. However, the standard one ranges from about 87,000 to about $104,000. So it's not a cheap Jeep, this thing. But now let's jump into Photoshop here. And let me show you what I'm going to attempt to do here. I want to compare it first First one with the original Jeep Wagoneer up there, we're gonna compare what we can take, what was actually implemented in the new one. Not a lot, to be honest. And then I'm gonna show you the side view of the regular Wagoneer and then long wheelbase Wagoneer and compare it to the original one. So here we have the original, I think this is the original, it's an early Wagoneer, Rosie, you're not gonna bite me, don't do it, please. Hey, Rosie. All right, so up here we have one of the early uh, Wagoneers, and I want to show you what carried over to the modern version of the Wagoneer down there. So not a lot. So I was hoping maybe some wood trim like this would uh, make its way onto the modern version. Maybe not wood the, as the material, but some sort of styling in the side to resemble that piece. I don't think this wood uh, panels would suit a modern car, it just would not look good in any way possible, shape or form. I, I don't know, I'm not gonna do that on the redesign, but what I am gonna do is turn this into more of a uh, more of an off-road looking machine, like we have in the early Wagoneers, and I think Rosie's gonna enjoy that as well, so she stops biting my uh, charging cable over there. I'm gonna make it look more off-roady, by adding some plastic cladding onto this piece right here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go all the way up here with the plastic cladding or keep it to this point. And I'm not sure about this side if I'm gonna add any cladding on that part. But just make it look more off-road worthy and not so much like a van, lifted van as I said before. I wanna show you the side views here. So up top we have the regular wheelbase, the short or standard wheelbase Wagoneer, which I think looks really good actually. It has the correct proportions or a Correct, it's in the eye of the beholder, but I think it looks really good. It has the same kind of proportions as its competitors, and I think that was the point to make it more boxy than, re than the regular Grand Cherokee, for example, and have it be more upscale, more classy than the Grand Cherokee. And I think they did a really good job here. But looking at the long wheelbase here, something happens in the rear, and you can see that it just looks like it maybe sticks out a little too far in the back. So this is 12 inches in total long longer than the short wheelbase or standard wheelbase, but the uh, the wheelbase itself is only shifted by, I think it was seven inches. So a lot of uh, the, the extension of this body happens in this part right here. So we, you can have a look at the, uh, the, the distance between, for example, the fuel filler cap and the tail lights. It's a lot longer on the long wheelbase. That means that the, of course, the mass is added on the rear end, and it kind of looks a little funky to me. I don't know. I really want to hear your your opinion on the long wheelbase Grand Cherokee. Do, do you do you feel the same way that something looks maybe a little off in the proportion, or is it just me? I'm not sure yet. I think I have to see this 
out in real life to really make up my mind about that. What's really interesting about the Wagoneer as well is that we have these upswings in the pillars. So the body color kind of swings up and it kind of gives it a almost like a top heavy look with these heavy pillars, thick pillars and also this upswing in the rear end creating this really thick pillar in the rear end which we don't have on the original. The original kind of has the opposite way so we have a, a thick pillar in the in, in the in the top and then it gets a little narrower the, the further down we go and it doesn't look as top heavy as the the newer ones you can see that the pillars are also very thin here and that's also has to do with a lot of regulation safety things and rollover protection and so on you kind of have to have them be thicker in today's world but maybe not this thick like we have right here and generally speaking I think the Wagoneer from the old days it just has this more rugged look it looks more like a proper Jeep that's ready to take on the trails than the luxury Grand Wagoneer that we have today so that's kind of the feeling that I want to implement in this redesign that we're gonna do right now speaking of the naming of the Jeep Grand Wagoneer and the Wagoneer it, it, I, I'm still confused by the naming of these models because the the Wagoneer and the Grand and Wagoneer, they still look the same, they don't have any different dimensions, it's just a different trim level and I think it would be make more sense if they just named the, the new Wagoneer the Grand Wagoneer short wheelbase and the Grand Wagoneer long wheelbase. That to me would make a lot more sense because then you can actually see physically the differences between the two names and not just have them be different trim levels. So it's a little bit confusing with the names here, but I'm sure I will get it eventually uh, when uh, as, as time passes. But the thing is, Jeep needed to have a big SUV out on the market to compete with, you know, the GMC Yukons, the Chevy Tahoes and the Cadillac Escalades. And this, I think, is the most expensive one in that segment from a base price standpoint. And I think it looks the most expensive too because it has a very unique design. The Chevy, the, the Escalade and the GMC, they kind of look very similar, like they've just been rebranded or rebadged, but underneath you have the same exact proportions in the same vehicle underneath the badging. But this has a clear, unique identity. And I really like that they decided to go with this upswing in the rear end to have the rear end almost be vertical and not any type of sport back style on this design. I want to have the Grand Wagoneer be very boxy and that's kind of what I'm going to emphasize even more right here in this redesign. So I want to implement an old <laughs> 60s or 70s front end onto this Grand Wagoneer that we have today and I think I'm working on the long wheelbase here. It's kind of hard to say from this angle, this three-quarter front view. But I really think that it's going to suit this overall look. Now I had some issues with the graphics because if I slap the 60s, 70s Wagoneer front face, front fascia or front grille and headlights onto this, we're gonna have some issues with graphics. It's gonna be too heavy in the front end. So at the very end of this redesign, I started playing around with some plastic cladding on the side to uh, balance out the massive uh, graphic feature that we have in the front end that takes up too much visual real estate. So I need to uh, kind of divert that attention onto something else on the side of the car to not have it be too front heavy visually and graphically. And I really think that final touch made a massive different difference on this design. I also like the square headlights. I think you can make some really cool square modern headlights onto this Jeep uh, Grand Wagoneer and make it look like it could be built today, like it could be something that is built today. And on top of that, I didn't know exactly how much of the grill I wanted to keep. I decided to keep that little house on top of the grill and then redesign the hood itself to, uh, to kind of flow into those lines. And I think that would be a great homage to the original Wagoneer as well. And it suits this type of styling, in my opinion, to have that type of uh, little graphic uh, unique feature in the front end on top of the grill. It is a very Grand wagoneer feature to have, so I think some having keeping that in this uh, redesign would be really cool as well, so that's why I decided to do that. And of, co of course, the grille, I don't like chrome that much, but we still have some chrome or silver pieces in the original Grand Wagoneer from, I mean, the, the, the stock from 2023, the long wheelbase. For example, the trim around the windows. 
We also have the trim out around the lower part of the grill and the, the skid plate in the front end. I, I think that's a, you know the protection shield in the front end, that's silver, and also a little bit of a silver trim piece on the side between in, in between the axles. So having some sort of silver or chrome, worst case scenario, <laughs> in the grill and around the headlights, it kind of made sense to me. So I decided to keep the chrome around the headlights to also have that connection to those other trim pieces that I just talked about. You also have a tiny little sliver of silver in the uh, side side mirrors as well on, on each side, obviously. For the wheels, I decided to go super retro on this wheel and, and basically take the original wheels or the wheels from that time era and just make them bigger. I like to do that because usually Car, uh, wheels from the 60s and 70s, they, you, they, a lot of times have a really cool design. And wheels, in my opinion, have just gotten more and more complex. And since this is a simple geometric design shape, this silhouette of this car, it's basically two boxes connected to each other with an A-pillar. I want to have the design of the wheels also be very simplistic in its design and styling. And I think these kind of suit this really well. Now the final touch that I was experimenting with that I didn't put in this video was to create some sort of graphic on the side but I decided to go against that because I, th I really like this clean look on the side and it, it, it gives it a, a, a good uh, visual height in the side as well to have this massive white surface that is all flat, it builds up the car in a beautiful way and it also gives it the right dimensions in my opinion. I also decided to move up the, the door handles to be in line with the shoulder line and not sit underneath them and that's also more true to the original uh, Grand Wagoneer which has the headlights almost right above the trim line on the windows. Overall, a very fun redesign to make, and this is something that I would love to see some custom shop out there uh, build in real life. I'm not sure how difficult it would be. I think the front end corner would probably be the hardest point how to, uh, to, to remold how to have the metal sheet of the front fender connect with now almost a 90 degree corner in the front end, which we don't have at all on the on the uh, normal Grand Wagoneer. So that would be a challenge for any shop that would like to build something like this. But still, looking at it right now, I think it looks, it just looks right. It looks correct. Like it could be a design from today with a clear resemblance specifically now in the front end to the original. Grand Wagoneer. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Don't forget to like this video. It really means a lot to me and the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more videos like this, I do it every week. So make sure you subscribe as well. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next video.